that was kind of controversial, I know. I'm sorry. And you don't like confrontations. No, I do not. Okay, so what you're saying, Casey, uh, also maybe from your experience as well, spending quite a few years in the surgery room, you're saying there are other procedures conducted besides bariatric procedures. I think it would be very naive to say otherwise. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Chipstock Investor Roadshow. Casey and I are still recording, not in our studio, obviously. So again, thank you not only for being here, but being patient with our variable quality in video and audio. Bit of a reversal here. I am going to be the host because I have some questions for Casey. Uh, Casey, what is the company we're talking about today? We are talking about one of our favorite companies, one of my favorite companies, Intuitive Surgical. So three months ago, we did a deeper dive into Intuitive Surgical. Make sure you check that out if you're not sure where our position is on this company. That's a good place to start. But Casey, we're covering it now because it was third quarter 2023 earnings last week for Intuitive let me hit you with some of the high level numbers before I delve into some questions I have for you about Novo Nordisk's Ozempic. Okay. So Q3 2023 revenue was $1.74 billion, up 12% year over year. Gap earnings per share of a buck in 16 cents, up just about 29% year over year. And on an adjusted basis, Earnings per share of a dollar forty six cents, up nearly twenty three percent year over year. Overall, this was another solid quarter for Intuitive Surgical, which is what we have come to expect from this company. Rain or shine in the global economy, this company just continues to chug higher, and it's nice to see earnings growth make a comeback uh, versus. At some points, the last couple of years, revenue was growing much more quickly than, than earnings. So that has flipped. Great sign for this company as they continue to unlock new efficiencies in their business. Okay, Casey, let's talk about Ozempic. This came up on the earnings call, but I think this has come up for us even more frequently in light of that video that I mentioned three months ago, because this is a stock we plan on holding for the ultra long term. And so these questions coming up about Ozempic, because the way you read it, sometimes it sounds like Ozempic and GLP-1 drugs are going to basically solve all of the health issues in the Western world. So Casey, let me ask you, this is a weight loss drug, which could obviously affect intuitive surgical's bariatric surgery business. How big of a deal is bariatric surgery exactly for intuitive? Okay, Nick, this question came up multiple times on the earnings call. They addressed it directly and multiple analysts had some questions about bariatric surgery and how intuitive surgical would be affected by Ozempic and drugs like it. And Jamie Samoth, the CFO, answered one of the questions saying that their total bariatric business represents about four to five percent of global procedures. So with intuitive surgical, bariatric procedures are a small portion of their business. Okay, so what you're saying, Casey, uh, also maybe from your experience as well, spending quite a few years in the surgery room, you're saying there are other procedures conducted besides bariatric procedures. I know it's surprising, but there are other surgeries other than bariatric procedures. Okay, all right, so basically a very, very small portion of Intuitive's overall global procedures. This was something that came up and it wasn't a question that was asked, but it was more someone informing me that there are a lot of comorbidities that are solved with weight loss drugs like Ozempic, a GLP-1 drug. Is Intuitive's business at risk if weight loss drugs like GLP-1s are here to stay People stay on these things for many years. Are a bunch of comorbidities going to get magically solved and intuitive surgery business is set for, for overall stagnation or perhaps even decline? Nick, that is a really good question. And it seems like a very easy solution because you're right. 
obesity does cause many comorbidities and many comorbidities could be solved with weight loss if we lived in a very simple world. We don't, though. The chief medical officer, Miriam Curie, spoke about this as well in the earnings call. I'll just quote her. Given compliance issues, costs, side effects, we expect that many people will not stay on the drug for more than a year or two. Some people will not tolerate this drug. It will become cost prohibitive to some people. There will be side effects. So ultimately, it's very possible that someone would not be able to remain on a drug like Ozempic for the long term, which may require them to look at a more invasive option, bariatric surgery. So as she mentioned, this could be maybe one or two years. So we could see some delay in bariatric surgery for intuitive surgical for the short term, but ultimately we'll probably see a return to growth for this very small portion of their business in the future. So that's an interesting point you make because it was implied actually on the earnings call that Intuitive's bariatric surgery business, specifically in the U.S., has already started to stagnate a bit uh, over the last couple of quarters because of Ozempic. I thought that was interesting because the way this has been pitched up to this point, it sounds like this is future disruption for Intuitive. So maybe just to make this clear, Intuitive is perhaps already lapping some disruption or is already in the midst of some disruption in its bariatric business because of GLP-1s like Ozempic? Yeah, that's, that's the way I understand it. And this makes a lot of sense because, of course, you're going to do the least invasive thing first. And so if you're offered the opportunity to take a medication that could help with your weight loss goals, of course, that would be much preferable than to go under the knife, so to speak, taking the risks involved with surgery. But in the long term, someone may have to circle back around to that more invasive procedure option. Interesting. So in spite of this current disruption going on right now, maybe it lasts for many years, maybe it doesn't. Despite this, Intuitive still overall growing its revenue in a low teens percentage year over year growth rate. Okay, Casey, I have another question for you on GLP-1 drugs like Ozempic and their long-term impact on society, because we see a lot of reports saying that this is the future to solving a lot of health problems, given the comorbidities tied to obesity. Is Ozempic really the future? And maybe we'll just say more broadly, GLP-1 drugs, because as a, I know there are some lawsuits going on about the ability to access a generic form of Ozempic. So let's just maybe say GLP-1 drugs in general. Are these a future large pillar of the healthcare system? And why or why not? I think, again, I would say, and this is completely my opinion here, but yes, in a perfect world, all of our problems could be solved by taking a medication and fixing the issue that we have. But ultimately, is that what drug companies are in business for? Are they ready for that kind of self-disruption? I don't think so. I, a drug like Ozempic is great. It'll work fantastic. Again, there could be a ton of reasons as to why someone cannot use this medication. So I'm curious about the self-disruption for drug companies like Novo Nordisk, which makes Ozempic. So you're saying there's a financial interest there besides selling Ozempic? Yes. <laughs> okay. I think... I think it would be very naive to say otherwise. Okay. They're not in business to solve all of our health problems no. because they would no longer be in business. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so Ozempic then in that light is just a cash windfall? Could be. All right. One last question. That was kind of controversial. I know. I'm sorry. And, and you don't like confrontations. No, I do not. <laughs> Here's another one for you. One last question. I'm thinking about these things as a potential disruptor. And my opinion from a financial standpoint is intuitive surgical is still a potential disruptor of the status quo, not a disrupted business. Agree or disagree? Why or why not? I absolutely 100% agree that 
intuitive surgical is a disruptor. And we covered this on that last video, and I still think it holds true. Those who are resistant to this change, surgeons, hospital systems, staff that is resistant to the idea of using robotic surgery, are going to be the ones who are getting disrupted in the future. And as we mentioned, intuitive surgical robotic procedures are still a very small portion of the procedures done worldwide. They have a ton of room for growth, and it is a very solid system that they have developed for many, many years. And more and more people in medical school, in their fellowships, are getting trained on these systems. So, you know, I'll just throw this figure out here because they don't often mention it because I think it's impossible to accurately track. But intuitive surgical and more broadly, robotic assisted surgery is something like a single digit percentage of global operations performed. So what you're saying is if GLP-1 drugs are a massive disruptor of the status quo, it's more traditional surgery, non-robotic assist surgeries that are going to get hit, not intuitive surgical. Is that the right way of thinking about this in your opinion? You can take a look at this intuitive surgical slide regarding their procedure growth drivers. They have the year-over-year -year growth for U.S. general surgery, the year-over-year -year growth for outside the U.S. in the non-urology field, and then they have all other. And bariatric is probably considered in that general surgery portion of this chart. But you can see that there are many other procedures that are being performed outside of bariatric procedures that intuitive surgical services with their equipment. Yeah. And folks, the healthcare industry is not growing at these rates, uh, which means intuitive is scooping up market share ultimately of the areas of the healthcare industry that it is going after. You know, I think maybe long story short is if GLP ones long-term become a pillar of the healthcare industry and throttle demand for surgery overall, it's a disruptor of not robotic surgery, but just surgery performed with non-robotic assist features. Exactly. Let's pivot away from Ozempic and GLP-1 drugs for a bit, because obviously, as you said, Casey, bariatric surgery is a very small percentage of what intuitive does and what surgeons and healthcare teams are doing with intuitive, more importantly. So I get a lot of questions about valuation, which... If you haven't seen our investment process video, go take a look at that. We do consider valuation, but it's the very last step in our process. And my strong belief is that's the right way of doing it for most investors because it's often flipped the other way around for the average retail investor. They look at stock price and what the PE ratio is first and then learn about the business, which really, I think, tees up a misunderstanding of the business overall when they start to learn about it. But whatever, at any rate, here's what I want to talk about. The stock trades for a very high valuation, over 50 times forward expected earnings. But there's a few reasons why. The primary reason, Casey, why profit margins have taken a dip over the last, say, five years, which again, has throttled that earnings per share growth and thus the valuation as the stock has held up remarkably well the last couple of years is this system called ION, which is outside of the traditional da Vinci surgical system. What is ION and why is it hurting intuitive surgical's profit margins? The ION machine is used for bronchoscopies. Okay. So this is more of a niche robotic assist instrument that they've developed. Uh, I'll get to the financials in a minute, but what kind of growth are we talking about here for this ION machine? Yes, they had 125% growth in procedures with the ION in this most recent quarter, and now they have 490 ION systems placed. Okay, so a niche product, actually at this point, quite a few systems placed. Last year when we were looking at Intuitive, this was still, you know, a pretty small product, the demand is remarkable for this. 
So we talked a bit more about the ion system and what it does and why it's important in our last video three months ago. There was also some other really dramatic growth in procedures from a different intuitive surgical system. What was that? What does that do? Yes, the single port or SP da Vinci system is used to reach those tight or difficult to access parts of the body, maybe like a complex colorectal procedure, possibly a lung lobectomy, something like that. And the growth rate for using the single port, the SP system was 54%. Oh, okay. So that's another smaller system with incredible growth rate, accelerating growth rate in this particular case for intuitive. Um, and I guess maybe I'll just insert a couple of financial comments on this. So two things with the ion and with the SP system, both of these are cheaper systems. So lower average selling prices or ASPs, um, as they're often referred to versus the multi-port and some of the larger da Vinci system uh, placements. And Intuitive has been talking about this now for multiple years, in addition to lower average selling prices, because these are newer systems, the profit margins on them are lower versus the more established da Vinci systems that have been out there in the wild for well over a decade. So. That's one reason when you have acceleration and growth of a lower profit margin system, of course, that is going to hurt the company's overall profit margins. They're working on that. Uh, new manufacturing facilities are, have been under construction to facilitate this new demand for intuitive. So CapEx is up. You can see that in, again, these financial tables that intuitive provides. Another reason <laughs> profit margins have been down as they invest in that R&D on new procedures as well. And then Casey, system placements or outright system sales versus a lease. Also something I, I think, you know, we're, now we're talking about nerdy stuff in the accounting world and let's not delve into two topics like that in one video, but I'll just say from an accounting perspective, a lease versus historical, just outright system sales also going to hurt profit margins. And you can see the rapid transition here and in the financial tables in this chart. Why would a hospital or a surgery center be so suddenly so interested in a lease versus purchasing the system outright? Yeah, Nick, that is a really good question because it does change the economics of the business a little bit. But a hospital system, surgery center may want to lease a device for various reasons. But one thing that was mentioned in earnings call is that while leasing reduces in-quarter revenue relative to the capital purchase, total economics are healthy for the customer and for Intuitive Surgical. Why? Leasing allows the customers to build clinical capacity when and where they need it and provides predefined pathways for the new technology as it enters the market. And that was mentioned by CEO Gary Guthart. So in other words, it intuitive, you know, builds the machine. They eat the upfront cost of taking just a, a overtime payment when they sell the lease, sell the system on leasing terms. But in exchange for that, you get for intuitive steady revenue, more of a subscription model, let's call it. Uh, and the customer, in addition to controlling their cash flow, they also get access to the latest and greatest technology as part of that lease. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and a good example of this could be the Case Insights machine learning AI program that looks at surgical science. Data on each procedure gets logged, and then that machine learning continues so that each procedure builds on the last. So eventually they will have a ton of data built into these, this AI case insight system. So that could be one area that benefits a lease. Mm -hmm. So like kind of bundling of, of tech services. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's interesting. We talk a lot about the virtuous cycle in the semiconductor industry, really any type of manufacturing industry as, as you take the latest and greatest tech to then go back and improve equipment 
use cases for the equipment, et cetera. So it sounds like Intuitive Surgical building its own kind of internal virtuous cycle of, of improvement here and uh, getting its getting its customers in on that virtuous cycle. Yeah, it's an ecosystem. Okay. And we like ecosystem or, or platform businesses a lot. I think all of this kind of helps explain that really high valuation, Casey. I think maybe we have slightly differing views on this particular point here. Is the stock a top buy right now? We have Ozempic disruption. We have uh, ongoing supply chain issues with the company, a change in Intuitive's business model that is, at least for the time being, hurting profit margins. Is a stock a buy anyways? Um, the stock is down almost 20% from when we talked about it three months ago. And we said, great company we plan on holding for the very, very long term but not one we're adding to at this point. Is it a buy now? I think we, in fact, called it our forever stock. I think we did. Because uh, the healthcare sector is by far my worst performing one when it comes to stock price. I have invested in some really horrible stocks in healthcare with the sole exception of Intuitive Surgical. Uh, I have been begging Nick to sell Teladoc for... A number of years now, but that's another episode. However, I love Intuitive Surgical. I think it's even with a high valuation, I really like the stock and it did come down in price, as you said, 20%. So I would say I'm ready to nibble. To nibble. High valuation still concerns me a bit, but I will say this if I had to choose between Intuitive Surgical or a basket of small cap stocks that earn little to no profit, some of them maybe little to no revenue even uh, in the healthcare industry. Intuitive Surgical has a high probability of making money over the next mm -hmm. 10 to 20 years. That basket of small cap startups and upstarts, there's probably like a 99% chance that basket doesn't make any money. Yeah, exactly. That's how I feel too. Healthcare is a tough nut to crack, Casey. I think one thing I've learned over the last few years in trying to pick stocks in this space is it is a very captive market. Once you get your foot in, especially on the U.S. healthcare system, the way it's it's been built is once you get your foot in the door and, and you're you have a foundation built in healthcare, it's really tough to get dislodged from it. It's not easy to disrupt as big and ripe for disruption as it may appear to be. I think Intuitive has that foothold in the industry now. And in addition to that foothold is, as you have said, a disruptor of the status quo. That's the high valuation. And um, even in spite of that, a high probability of making money over the next uh, couple of decades. So folks, are we buying? Maybe. Maybe. I think it's a nibble. It's a nibble. Uh, it probably not a best buy now in our book, but nevertheless, a top chip stock investor company that we like to follow because these systems use lots of chips and have done a great deal of pushing the boundaries of what semiconductors are possible of accomplishing over the last 20 plus years since Intuitive has been at this. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you have not. Hit the notifications. We provide a lot of uh, articles that we post on our community board. So you'll get those if you hit the bell to get notified. The link below if you would like to lend your financial support to our channel as well. We appreciate all of you very much for tuning in, including when we are on the road and trying to figure out how best to record without our studio equipment. Thanks again for tuning in. We will see you again later this week, folks.